seven. You're watching the eclectic show. So what do you guys think? We're watching the eclectic show. What about the eclectic show? You should, you should talk English all the time. One, two, one, two. Hi, everybody. I'm Seven. You're watching The Eclectic Show. Today we have Cameron Matt, uh, and we have Matt, both writers, both contributors to The Eclectic Show, to Sonic Eclectic magazine. Okay, so we're starting out very simple, hitting hard. If Zimmerman were black and Trevor Martin, Trevon Martin was white, how would people feel about the case? Would it be the same case? Um, I, I don't think it would be, um, considering just from right from the beginning, Zimmerman wasn't arrested. He was let go from the police. It took a while for people to react um, took a, a while for people to make some change in that that situation. Um, Matt, you've been writing for Sonic Collective for a while. What has the feedback been from from different people that you've come across in reference to this story? Well, personally, I think people are injecting race into a case where it doesn't belong. I mean. If Zimmerman had been black, the case never would have gotten to where it is today. It wouldn't have gained such national notoriety in the first place. Um, I think what it comes down to in the end is forensic evidence, and I agree that I think Zimmerman was not guilty of second-degree murder. I think he was a kind of a crappy person. I don't think he had any right to follow uh, Trayvon, but what he did wasn't technically illegal, and it was dignified under the stand your ground law at the time. Now, at what point did you feel this particular straight from the beginning after hearing uh, the defense? Uh, where did you get this this viewpoint? Because well, there's a lot of people out there that, that do believe that uh, Zimmerman was innocent. Well, our courts are only designed to figure out whether someone is guilty or not, not whether they're innocent. Um, I was one of the guilty parties that was on board uh, okay. Trayvon's attorneys, his family's okay. attorney, until I saw the pictures of Zimmerman's head and the injuries he'd sustained from Trayvon attacking him. And I do know that the kid was uh, under the influence of narcotics at the time of the confrontation, so that played into my view a lot, too. Okay. Now, did you listen to the actual defense? Like, did you, did you watch the court case live on CNN? Or did you, did you just um, the tweets and the little snippets from the press? I did watch most of the case. I missed the last day. Okay. Well, I don't know. A lot of things um, to me just didn't make any sense. For instance, Zimmerman said that Trevon was holding his nose. He said that he was choking him. But yet there were no sign of any kind of blood on Trevon at all. So to me, it's like he had to have lied. I mean, there's no way to do all that when someone allegedly is choking up blood, has his bloody nose. Um, it seems that all the injuries that he sustained was after the fact. It didn't seem like that actually really happened because when he rode around with police and the videotape is out there, um, he didn't have a, a bruised nose. He had like a piece of tape around his head. It didn't look like what he tried to make it seem to be. And if it really was that, how come there's no trace of blood on his hands? There's just a lot of things that didn't seem to, to, to lock up at all. 
lock up at all. I mean, I, you know, and I'm not just picking sides to it. When you look at when you look at the facts, things don't add up. You know, it, it just didn't, didn't. I don't know, Cameron. Do you f f have the same view, or um, when you checked it out? Um, well, when it comes to a huge national court case, I don't really become too obsessive over it. I I read the facts. I read the case studies and the case facts after the verdict has been announced. Uh, just that way it has more resonance within me rather than just uh, watching it on TV. Uh, I agree with some of Matt's points um, mm -hmm. because, yes, there is standard ground clause, and I know plenty of people who are gun enthusiasts that only operate under like having their weapons as a means of self-defense having said that it it's far from just shooting someone fatally and i think if some of the variables were switched around if zimmerman was black and martin was white there would have been far more aggression towards zimmerman and far more um pity and sympathy and all of these feelings uh for for martin because for some reason i don't know what it is it just seems that a black man is far more threatening than just a white man to people. And even though just as a white little kid should be far more sacred and far more innocent right. than a kid of some other race, for some reason, uh, under just generic white privilege that it seems to exist today. Um, I do think there are a lot of muddled facts about the case. Uh, the self-defense, how self-defense uh the bruises the uh trace of narcotics in martin's system uh now wait a minute like i just that's... gotta really be clear on the traces of, of narcotics they said it was at such a low percent and two let's just be really specific they're talking about marijuana yeah. um now i have haven't spoken <laughs> uh, marijuana or anything like that but what i know of it and it's been said people tend not to be violent when they're high no. So, no, it's and also there's another, another very important uh, piece of the puzzle. Very simply, if you're watching the game, all you want to do is get back to the game, you know? Yeah. So it just, it just didn't, this whole lurking and he was looking for trouble. If someone's following me, <laughs> or rather stalking me in, in the dark with a flashlight, with two flashlights, and that person's bigger than me, I don't know what kind of confrontations might come about or, or, or would come about, but it, it just seems a little, I mean, the buildup. I mean, the thing is, is up until that point of the shooting, Zimmerman was wrong, Zimmerman was wrong, Zimmerman was wrong. There was nothing, he, the, the police even said, leave him alone. Are you, are you stalking this person? Are you chasing this person? Um, that should not have been the case, period. And I'm a little upset that that didn't seem to play in the, the jury's mind well, as much. You have to remember, this is a it's a court of law, not a court of character, and right. it it doesn't necessarily matter whether he should have pursued Trayvon, but whether it was illegal, and whether that directly led to the killing. Now, I want to go back to the forensic evidence. The angle in which Trayvon was shot, criminologists right. pretty much universally indicates that he was on top of Zimmerman, and that there was a struggle and that Zimmerman had grabbed the gun and as Trayvon was allegedly reaching for it and shot from an upward angle based on the trajectory of the bullet. So it's pretty much black and white that Trayvon was attacking him. So what I guess you're getting at that you have to ask is whether right. Trayvon was thus in attacking him, whether he had the right to. Right, yeah. but, and, and yeah. we, nobody was there. I mean, we, we weren't there to who initiated um, but you know, 18 months of mixed martial arts. I don't, I don't know. It just seems that and he, he had the weight on his side. He had the age, the the strength on his side. And of course, you know, he, Trevon went into a knife fight with someone with a machine gun. You know, he just he didn't have any of the tools. He didn't have 18 months training. He didn't have all these other things. He didn't have to fight in the first place. He didn't have to fight in the first place. All he wanted to do was get back to the game. Um, let's just check out some of the word on the street, um, what they think about um, if Zimmerman were also, white. Also, remember Zimmerman is not white. Right. But, well, he's half, half white. 
just as he we say we have a black man. president, he's half black. So, you know, where, where, it, <laughs> where it fits, I guess. I, mean, I that's, think if Zimmerman were black, it would have been different. I feel like there would have been consequences earlier. If it were a white person, they always think that there was some reason why the white person would have done it. And I feel like if they were black, they would have immediately gotten locked up like we usually are. Um, I think that that's completely rhetorical. I feel as though any sort of case where brown skin is involved would be probably handled the same way. As soon as we throw a bit of Caucasian in it, it might be expedited differently. But until we change as a society, that's just how it rolls. But definitely, if, if it was the opposite, I think it would be a huge difference. If Zimmerman was like a black guy and Trayvon was a white gentleman, the roles would be totally different. The case would be, it wouldn't have been any questions about it. It would have been jumped right on. Absolutely, there would be no question. He would have been locked up and already dead by now. He, it would have been no questions. If, if you're going to make the positive claim that he was a racist and, that, and thus make the case that that was the reason he followed Trayvon, you need to have evidence for that. Yeah, yeah. Like, and besides this, if you're, if you're going to make a case out of it. Yeah, and I don't think, well, his brother certainly says that he wasn't racist, and I have no clue whether to say, because racism isn't, it, it, there are all shades of degree of racism, and right. if he saw, like... It leaves a trail, though. When you're a racist, you, it affects your actions in ways that yeah. show, it shows through. Yeah. Right. I mean, so I mean I he, didn't he didn't blatantly say you know, the N-word or stuff like that, but these punks, these punks do this all the time. And um, he, he, went, he went into that situation with anger or malice. We can't get in his head to know if he went in that situation and say, I want to kill somebody tonight. But at all points that he definitely didn't go into it just observing, he didn't go into it, um, let me just find out what's going on. He went on a mission whether it was totally, whether he was conscious of this mission that he went on, um, I can't say, you can't say, I mean, uh, I guess the jury can't say. Um, maybe they felt it was easier just to say, well, you know, let's just, um, we, we can't prove what's in his head. Um, but it just, a lot of things just seem not to, not to fit. Maybe, maybe the trial needed to be longer you know, rather than just, just quit it right around the way. Um, and for the record, I like to say there, it, even, even on CNN, all the news stations, all the lawyers talking, there, there is an assault on um, young black men, whether it's perception, uh, well, minority men in general. Um, New York City stop and frisk um, that needs to be addressed immediately. I there mean, is. Can, can you, I mean, uh, both of you gentlemen, do you feel at this point, oh, go ahead, proper, yes? I just don't again? think this case in particular is a proper example of that issue. It doesn't, race doesn't seem to be the primary factor in what happened here. Lots of things happen every day for which race is the primary factor, and they get pushed under the water. Mm -hmm. But... Well, you know what, let, let, let's take what you just said. Let's say, let's just say for uh, sake of argument, Zimmerman is not racist, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe what has happened had, had anything to, maybe had to do with class, maybe had to do with other situations, his own personal frustration, maybe it could have been anybody walking around that a neighborhood that watch. Yeah. A, well, that, well, you know what, that, if he's a neighborhood watch, that means he's seen Trevon. He's seen Mr. Martin. He's not some strange human being creature. When when the phone exactly. conversation with his friend, it was said that oh here's that that creepy guy again bothering people. So to me, there there's some sort of relationship there. There's some sort of um, identity there that that was pre-existing. I'm not sure about that. He saw I mean, it, was, a guy it was said he, during the case. There was nothing to indicate that he had a past history with this kid so but um but within that you know w what happens now what do we do now you know um, where do we go from here and to oh, th oh this is my point with what you said before if race had nothing to do with the actions that has happened 
we definitely can see signs of how the case was handled that that race did pay you know it, it definitely played roles with, within this case the fact that any any male I mean that that isn't a cop once you get arrested uh, once you commit a murder, once you commit a murder, you get arrested, point blank. He got mm -hmm. to go away scot free. I mean, I don't know. I mean, who? Let's say, for the sake of argument, mm -hmm. and it very well may be true that he pursued Trayvon because of Trayvon's race. Mm -hmm. Does that justify what happened afterward? I'm, I'm saying. Is it except uh, let's see. does it does it matter? Would it would it this isn't you know a court to distinguish whether or not Zimmerman was a racist, it was whether or not he committed second degree murder, whether or not he killed in self defense. The race is really irrelevant. Actually I agree with that a hundred percent in 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 that regard that um I think there are tons of racist people in the world, and I think they need to live in harmony with tons of people that aren't racist. I don't think the racism is the issue. The issue is a young child was killed and didn't, didn't have to. All he wanted to do was go to the store and go back and watch his game. So um, we're going to do some overtime on some other topics. Let's leave this there. Anyone wants to hit us up on our Facebook, on the Twitter, The Eclectic Show, and we'll respond to stuff. We're gonna move on from this topic, but we will come back to it if there's an interest for it. Um, and we do, we do have a caller, and I just want to get a mother's perspective really quick on this case. Hello? Hello? Hi, how you doing? This is uh, Barbara? This is her. How you doing today? This is The Eclectic Show. Thank you so much for uh, coming in from Atlanta. Um, we wanted to get your opinion on the, the case coming from the perspective of a mother uh, that has an African-American son. the way that I feel about um, the whole situation. Um, I mean, I actually would be devastated if, you know, this had happened to my child. And, you know, a lot of people are kind of rallying and they're all over the situation. I, I mean, I strongly feel like justice wasn't served. Um, I feel like he shouldn't have had to have something that he would have had to pay for, either restitution or just something, an apology to, you know, the parents, you know, um, a public apology or something. And it was just like, you know, he's just basically walking away from it. Um, you know, to have a son, to have a son that's partially African-American, I really feel that, um, you know, it, it's, it's just a sad thing. It's like, you know, now a lot of parents that I've talked to, they feel like they want to lock their, their sons up. You know, they, you know, they're scared for them to be out at night. You know, they're scared for them to, to learn how to drive, you know, um, without thinking that it's okay, um, you know, that someone can hurt them. I mean, I've, I've seen the pictures, you know, I've seen the pictures of, of him lying there, you know, dead, and you can just see, you know, in his face, it's just a sad situation that this little boy, I mean, just to think what happened in his mind, I mean, he wasn't on the corner, he wasn't thugging, he wasn't doing anything, you know, he was just going to the store and, and coming back. And, you know, we also have to think about what was going in his mind when this stranger in this car or, you know, was following him. I mean, it's, it's just a sad situation. And I just think that, you know, it could have been done a, a little bit differently. But I also think that before we decide to start letting people do neighborhood watches, I mean, there needs to be some type of, like, mental, you know, um, or psychological testing that they need to go through 
you know, because it's just getting to the point now where people are just extremely paranoid. I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm very paranoid for my son. I mean, I'm extremely paranoid for him. I mean, you know, he's only 10 now, but, I mean, in the next six years, he's going to be driving. And it's like now, you know, should I, I, I start, you know, um, locking him up now where he has no freedom? And I just feel like now a lot of parents are going to deny their children the freedom to be, you know, you know, junior adults or, or pre-teens or teens. I mean, they're going to start denying them because we're literally scared for our children now. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty and um, just, just just sharing with us. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. All right, gentlemen. That was a, that was a different perspective. Uh, we are The Eclectic Show. Um, this is definitely a topic that is hitting the nation, and the world is watching to see how we, we handle this. Alrighty, um, we're going to go into overtime. We're going to be talking about the B word next, and uh, but to wrap it up, um, let let's let's continue to watch, let's continue to be involved, and um, let's hash this out. Let's hash this out, America. We have to fix this. Whether it's coming to an agreement of what has happened has happened. We'll make some changes and we'll probably talk about that a little later too we're watching the eclectic show the eclectic show